Okay, in this video I want to talk about something that's quite topical and which raises temperatures, to put it mildly, depending on whether you own a house or are trying to get on the property ladder. The question of house prices, the value of houses, the affordability and whether houses are overpriced, whether there's going to be a crash, whether they are simply not worth it or all of these issues. And I'm here to tell you, based on my experience and based on observation, that this is not a straightforward matter. There's a number of scenarios, there's a number of different circumstances. Let's just say, I'm going to put a number of them to you now in this, and I think by the end of this video, I think you might have a slightly different view about how much a house is worth, any house. First thing to understand is, what is a house worth? It's worth whatever you can get for it in the open market. In other words, if there's a willing buyer and a willing seller, whatever the willing buyer is prepared to pay, provided there's no exceptional circumstances surrounding it, then a house is worth whatever the market is prepared to pay for it. And the market, you only require one person to come along and give you the price so you need to understand at the outset there's no point saying that such and such a house was bought in 1986 for 50 grand and now it's selling for 250 grand and there's no way it's worth 250 grand why because i'm comparing it with the house selling for the same house selling for 50 grand in 1986 that quite frankly is nonsense the house is worth 250 grand if somebody, some person, some man or woman comes along and is prepared to pay 250 grand for it. Okay, that's the starting point. I want to put a number of different scenarios to you, however. Consider two houses, for example, for the moment. I do a lot of conveyancing here in my practice in Enfield and I am doing conveyancing in the likes of Cavan, Leitrim, Roscommon, Mayo, uh, Kerry, Cork, Dublin. Kildare, Mead, Westmead, you name it, I've probably done conveyancing in most counties in the country. Let's just say for the sake of argument at the moment I have a client buying a house in Kinniga or in uh, Cavan, let's just say Cavan, or let's say Longford or let's say Roscommon. I could tell you where to go in any of those counties today to buy a house for between 60 and 100 grand. You might say, Jesus, who wants to live in Cavan or Longford or Roscommon? With all due respect to those counties and to the citizens of those counties. However, you'd be surprised because some people, some people can work from home. And I have a client who's buying a property uh, in Leitrim or in uh, Cavan or in Longford or wherever, and they're actually able to work from home. So for that person, a house is very, very affordable. They can buy one for around about 100 grand and they're perfectly happy with it. You might say, I don't want to live in the country, etc., etc. That's fair enough. But in terms of comparing the houses, the 60 grand house in, let's say, Cavan, and the 250 grand house, let's say, in Enfield, or indeed in Dublin, if you can get one, which is the better value? You might say that if you're stuck below in Leitrim or Cavan or Roscommon or Longford or some place, you paid a hundred grand for a house, you're nowhere near public services, you're nowhere near public transport, and you're nowhere near educational establishments, and you're nowhere near jobs. Then you might say paying three hundred and fifty grand to buy a house in Dublin by comparison, because it's got public transport, it's got services it's got jobs, it's got third level institution, educational institutions and so on. You might actually say that a house in Dublin for 350 grand is better value than a house in say Longford or Roscommon or Leitrim for 100 grand. It will very much depend on the circumstances and it will depend on where you are in your stage in life as well because you may want some place to retire. If you want some place to retire you're not going to want to go into Dublin and pay 350 grand for a house to be close to third level institutions if your kids are up and gone and if you have no intention of working. Uh, and likewise, you may be happy enough to go down the country. But when you go down the country, then you may have a problem in terms of public service and in terms of the public transport. You might find no buses and no train.
So you're going to weigh up the situation between, say, a 60 grand house or a 100 grand house down the country versus a 350 grand house in Dublin. And it may well be the case that the 100 grand house is great value for you, or it may well be the case that it's actually better value for you to buy the house in Dublin for 350k. Is the house in Dublin worth 350k? You tell me. Because if you are prepared to pay it, and if you're prepared to pay it to have the proximity to the services that I've spoken about, add to jobs and so on, well then it is worth 350 grand. You might say it's expensive, but what's expensive? Because the house is worth whatever anyone is prepared to pay for it. The second scenario that I want to look at is the average industrial wage. Let's say the average industrial wage in Ireland is, let's just for the sake of argument, we'll say 40 grand. I don't know what it is. Let's say it's 40 grand. And let's say the average house is uh, 80 grand. That's twice the uh, average industrial wage. And you might say, that's fantastic. Uh, I can buy a house for twice the average industrial wage. And that's fair enough. But let's say the average industrial wage is 150 grand. Twice the average industrial wage then is 300,000. You can then buy a house for 300 grand. So is a house at 80 grand or 300 grand, which of them is the best value? Obviously, how much you're earning and the average industrial wage would be a factor. Because if the average price of a house, for example, is half a million, but the average industrial wage is 250 grand, then two times your average annual salary will buy you a house. That's fantastic value. So is the house then for 500 grand expensive? Not at all, it's a bargain. It's cheap as chips because you can buy it for two times the average industrial wage. As I say, it's a hypothetical situation, but I'm simply putting the scenario to you that uh, the question of the value of a house, how much is a house worth, is not a nominal or absolute figure. It will depend on other factors. It'll depend on location, it'll depend on proximity to jobs and services, it'll depend on the average industrial wage. And then if we go back to say 1986 when I bought my first property versus today. In 1986 I can remember paying interest rates of 18%. I can remember at the same time unemployment rates of well in excess of 20% and I can remember inflation uh, being very very high and I can remember as I say unemployment and inflation and uh, rather interest rates going through the roof. Back then you could buy a property for small money. I bought a property for small money but I was paying interest at 18% whereas I, if I got the opportunity to pay twice as much for my property but could get cheap money like I can get today at 2 or 3 or 4% that's again a different scenario. So you compare 1986 versus today. Today you have interest rates and you have money at two, three, four percent or whatever it is versus 18% back then. Today you have practically full employment versus massive unemployment and immigration back then. And compare the economy today in Ireland, one of the wealthiest economies in the world, versus practically going bankrupt back in 1986, 87. Three general elections in the space of 15 months. The country was absolutely on its uppers. And there was talk about the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, coming in and Ireland basically de declaring bankruptcy. Again, you're going to compare 1986 versus today. You might say a property in 1986 at 60 grand. Jesus, I love that. That would be fantastic. But as I say, if you couldn't get a job, if you had no income, and if interest rates were 18%, then the 60,000 euro house isn't so cheap. Whereas today, a house by comparison at 350 grand, if you're earning good money, if the economy is strong, and if the interest rate on the money you borrow is low, maybe it's better to buy a house now at 350 grand versus the 60 grand you might have paid then. So you can see that the question of what is a house worth, the question of are houses overpriced, is it a good time to buy? Jesus, the market is going to crash. A house, you know, that house, as I say, sold for 60 grand back in 1986 and now it's selling for 250 grand. I bought a property back in 1989 or 90 and I bought it for 147,000 euros. It's worth over a million now. But the point is, 
that and I don't own it anymore. But the point is that back then, 1989 or whatever, uh, money was hard to come by and it was expensive. 147,000, I can guarantee you, was a lot of money. And yet today, it would look like a bargain. So you can't be too absolute, I don't believe, about how much a house is worth or whether houses are overpriced. You need to look at the context. You need to look at interest rates. You need to look at inflation. You need to look at the proximity to jobs and to services. You need to look at proximity to public transport. You need to look at the availability of work. You need to look at the average industrial wage. You need to look at a lot of factors. So I'm saying to you that a house for me or for you in say Cavan or say Longford for a hundred grand could actually be a more expensive house than one in Dublin for 350 grand, depending on the circumstances and vice versa. It would be lunacy for me if I wanted to retire and if I could work from home and do a bit of part-time consulting, it would be lunacy probably for me to buy a house in Dublin for 350 grand if I could buy a nice little cottage below in Galway or in Longford or in cabin or someplace uh, for 60 or 70 grand but again it'll depend on the circumstances so beware of people telling you that houses are underpriced or overpriced or bad value or good value or anything else you must be very very careful and you must weigh up all the circumstances yourself but you must as best you can take into account the likes of inflation the likes of interest rates the likes of the average industrial wage etc etc and the house then is worth whatever somebody is prepared to pay for it Hope you find this video thought-provoking, useful. Uh, I'm sure you don't agree with much of it. I'm sure you might agree with some of it. Leave a comment down below. I'd be interested in hearing your views, but this is not a black and white situation. This is not a one-size-fits-all scenario. This is not a situation where you can say, I'm going to sit tight, do nothing, and house prices are going to fall, because it's a much more complex question than that. And obviously the whole question of supply and demand uh, will feed into the equation as well. Anyway, I hope I've given you some food for thought. Um, I'd appreciate if you gave it the thumbs up down below, the video the thumbs up down below on YouTube. And you may be interested in subscribing to my YouTube channel. Thanks a lot.